What's going on everybody? Asad Hashimali here for the first lesson of economics. Now let's dive straight into it. What is economics? Economics is the study of how resources, uh, production, distribution of wealth, how all that comes into play, how consumption comes into play in an economy as a whole, in a government as a whole, in a society as a whole. The great thing about economics, and this is why the tuition guys came together, is because sociology and economics come hand in hand. With sociology, you understand why there are some political issues related on economics, and with economics, you get the answer to those issues and to the crises in today's day and age. You know that there's global warming, there's climate change, and why those things are happening. So all together, you are getting an answer as to how groups of people allocate resources to the best possible optimum and efficient way possible now the what that answers what is economics the most important concept in economics actually is uh, that of scarcity now because of unlimited wants all of us want everything I would like to have a studio and shoot this I would like to have this shot being uh, with with a red camera shooting in 4k and I would also like this to be everywhere in the world at real time and to see this live but that can't happen because I don't have those resources. Limited resources. Unlimited wants coupled with limited resources leads to something called scarcity. And scarcity is basically a limitation to what we have in our world with us right now. Scarcity is a problem which all of us are facing and that is actually what's leading to the world into climate change and into global warming because we don't have much oil left we've cut off a lot of our trees, our, uh, our oceans are contaminated and we basically lost a lot of lives and natural resources along the way because of scarcity. Now, what are these resources which are limited? These resources are something called factors of production. Factors of production are of four types, land, labor, capital and enterprise. Land are all those, land comprises of all those resources which are found above and below the physical land. Anything in the sea is, uh, comprised, is, is classified as land. Anything above, like trees, fruit, cotton, wheat, um, all that comes onto, uh, onto, into land. Now, for example, as a factor of production, even your property would be considered as land if you're not using it to actually produce something else. Uh, labor is the human effort of work. All right, so me being an economics teacher right now, that is my labor into my effort being. So my effort would be classified as labor. Now, capital. Capital is anything that helps process or helps in the production process of what I'm doing. For example, this whiteboard right here is capital for me. It's helping me teach you guys and it's helping me conduct my classes on a regular basis. So that is my capital into this whole venture. Now, enterprise. Enterprise basically is the risk-taking component of the other three factors of production. Entrepreneurs exercise a risk in allocating these resources to the best of their ability for their ventures and for their businesses or for uh, for the for the need of human for the for human people for human for the human beings and for uh, just making sure that they can achieve their goals along the way now these resources all right these factors of production come in three different sectors. But before I mention these three different sectors, understand that you have something called a primary sector, sorry, you have a, a public sector and you have a private sector. Now, the public sector and the private sector, all right, two new words, but what comes above that? These two categories are called economic agents. Now, economic agents are the government, you as individuals, and firms and businesses, all right? These three can be either in the public or in the private sector. The public sector are those services or those service providing industries that are run by the government, uh, that do not make a profit, or that are there to help people and to provide basic needs and necessities. The private sector comprises of individuals and firms and businesses that are there to make a profit or that are there to provide anything at, um, at some premium altogether. Now, the public and the private sector exercise their abilities to make anything in from the primary sector, the secondary sector, or the tertiary sector. The primary sector is the first stage in the industrial sectors where they are extracting natural resources. So for example, Exxon and Shell, if they're mining for oil, that would be that they, their, their venture is in the primary sector because they're in the work of natural resource extraction. That means that oil, minerals, um, sea salt, even uh, fishery, Fishing, that would be the primary sector of uh, industries. 
the secondary sector. Now this is the manufacturing part of the, uh, of the secondary sector in which you will see um, that anything that is actually furthering the process. So you have fishing as a primary sector but then that fish needs to be uh, scaled and cut and finished before it gets sold. So that part, the cutting and the scaling is the secondary sector. The tertiary sector is the service sector and that is where there's human interaction and when goods are being sold like retail, like H&M. H&M is in the service sector, the stores are in the service sector, banking, insurance, so on and so forth. Now, the second last concept we're going to touch is opportunity cost. This is, never forget this definition, the next best alternative for God, the expense that comes. The government could have to make a school or um, let's say a hospital. Now they have limited resources, we all know that. So if they use all their resources to make a school, they can't make a hospital. That means that the opportunity cost of making a school is a hospital. If they use the resources to make a hospital, the opportunity cost is making a school. So, it's the expense, remember that, we're going to touch that in just a second, it's the expense of making these things. The expense of making a hospital is a school, the expense of making a school is a hospital. They can't make the hospital because the resources are there. So, the next best alternative of making a school would be a hospital. The next best alternative of you, of you not watching my video is watching Fezan's video. Yeah, because you can't watch them at the same time, right? Makes sense? Now, oh, the board changed. That's okay, that's weird. So, um, how do you describe opportunity cost on a curve, on a, on a graph, through the production possibility curve? The production possibility curve maps two different types of goods across one another, and over here we have spinach and kokomo. Now, don't always remember to label your diagrams properly. Alright, so the first, if we have all our resources delegated to spinach, the economy could be making A of spinach. And if all the resources were, were dedicated to making Kokomo, we would be making B of Kokomo. Alright? Un understood? Now this curve is downward sloping, it's concave. Which means that along, if we move along the, um, the PPC, we are actually uh, shifting our resource allocation. So we are changing the combination of resources to make spinach and Kokomo across this line. As we move down, we face something called increasing opportunity cost. Let's see how that happens. Now at point X, we are making 40 of spinach and 10 of kokomo. Which means that if we move from X to Y, we're making 10 less of spinach, but 20 more of kokomo. All right, so that means that there's an opportunity cost. That means that if we um, say shift from back from Y to X, if we go backwards, Let's say that the government doesn't like this combination and they want to go back from X from Y to X. That means that the expense is more. We need to get just get 10 more of spinach. We're actually losing 20 more of kokomo. Which means that the expense is more. The, the, the alternative to making 10 more of spinach is actually 20 less units of kokomo. Understood? This is a little tricky, so scroll back, rewind this just so you can understand it. Remember that the expense is more, the, the loss that you make is more, which is why we say there's an increasing opportunity cost over here. Now, some points you will see are inside uh, the PPC. That means that this combination of resources is easily attainable, but it's inside, which means that it's not optimum, it's not efficient, it's not maximum capacity. Remember that, we're not operating on maximum capacity if we are at a combination like Z. But if we're at a combination over here, which is D, which is outside the PPC, that means actually we don't even have the resources to get here. So how can we get to a point like D? If we are, say, over here, we might face an outward shift in our PPC. Our PPC can shift outwards based on two things, the quality of our factors of production or the quantity of our factors of production. Let's say um, America or India or anyone gave us more kokomo and spinach. Automatically, we would have shifted our PPC out. But if, say, there was a natural disaster over here, or there was, an, or there was a war and a lot of uh, our resources were damaged, we might actually have to move into a point like Z, which would shift our PPC in. Now, I also said quality of resources. Now, the quality of resources could improve based on two things, education and also technology and innovation. So, quality, education and technology, Quantity would change because of something good happening, more resources coming in, or something bad happening, resources being depleted altogether. I hope you like this lesson. If you have any questions, swipe up to the comment section and write back to us, or you can just DM us on our feed. Thank you so much for watching, and next week we will be doing more of this stuff. So see you guys. Peace out.